in this lecture we will learn about primary uh, storage and memory devices uh, secondary storages including removable devices the benefits and drawbacks of embedded system hardware devices used as input output and storage the difference between uh, ram rom sram dram uh, prom eprom eeprom the use of ram rom sram dram in range of devices monitoring and control systems the use of uh, logic gates in solid state drives uh, and so and so forth so before we start we should have an idea of uh, what is the difference between memory and storage uh, why is it necessary to have both internal and external memory or storage devices uh, recognition of uh, memory and storage devices difference between online and offline storages uh, the difference between the data access time and data transfer rate when using memory and storage devices so these things uh, need to be considered at the end of this lecture so let us start with the types of memory and storage devices so uh we will be looking into storages uh, um with the uh, with respect to their manufacturing terms like magnetic storages optical solid state or uh, and with respect to their uh, their uh, lo location uh, away from the uh, cpu so we have ram and rom closest to the cpu and then we have got secondary storage devices hard disk and ssd and then we have offline storage devices that we can remove and take away from the computer like cd dvd blu ray and flash drives computer require uh, some form of memory and storage uh, memory is uh, usually referred to as the internal devices which the computer can access directly uh this memory can be users workspace temporary data and that is uh, the key to run the computer storage devices allow users to store applications data and files uh, the users data is stored permanently and they can change it or read it as they wish storage needs to be larger than internal memory since the user may wish to store large files such as music files or photographic images storage devices can also be removable to allow uh, data for example to be transferred between computers removable devices allow the user to store important data in a different uh, building in case of data loss uh, however all of this has become a lot less important with the advent of technology such as uh, uh, bluetooth and cloud storages internal memory includes components such as registers which are the part of uh, microprocessor there is also memory cache uh which is external to the microprocessor this is used to store data which the processor will probably need to use again memory cache now uh first of all let's start with primary memory primary memory is part of computer memory which can be accessed directly from the cpu and that is why we call it primary memory it contains uh, random access memory and read only memory random access memory and read only memory chips a uh, primary memory allows the processor to access applications and services temporarily stored in memory locations uh so all computer systems come with some uh, form of ram 
without RAM computer cannot be built. Uh, these memory devices uh, are not really random as the name suggests random access memory it refers to the fact that the uh, memory location can be accessed independent of which memory location was last used so it is not in series access time to uh, access time to locate data is much faster in ram than in the secondary uh, devices ram can also be uh, written to or read from and data stored can be changed by the user or by the computer. Used to store data files part of the application or part of the uh, operating system currently in use and this is uh, volatile. Uh, volatile means memory contents are lost on powering of the computer. In general the larger the RAM the faster the computer will operate. In reality RAM never runs out of memory it continues to operate uh, but just uh, becomes slower and slower as more data is stored. As RAM becomes full, the processor has to continually access the secondary data storage devices to overwrite old data on RAM with the new data. This is called uh, virtual memory. By increasing the RAM size, the number of time this has to uh, be done is considerably reduced thus uh, making the computer operate more quickly. There are currently two types of RAM, dynamic RAM or DRAM and static RAM or SRAM which is also called cache. Dynamic RAM. Each dynamic RAM chip consists of a number of transistors and capacitors. Each of these parts is tiny since the single RAM chip will contain millions of capacitors and transistors. Capacitors hold the bit of information like zeros and ones and transistors act like switches. They allow the chip control circuitry to read the capacitor or change the capacitor's value. This type of RAM needs to be constantly refreshed because it gets leaked. Uh, because uh, the capacitor needs to be recharged every 15 microseconds otherwise it would lose its value so it actually leaks it is not refreshed if it is not refreshed uh, the capacitor's charge will leak away very quickly uh, leaving very uh, every capacitor with the value zero DRAM uh, have a number of uh, advantages over SRAM they are much less expensive, uh, consumes less power and have higher memory capacity than static RAM. Now, static RAM. A major difference between SRAM and DRAM is that SRAM does not need to be constantly refreshed. It doesn't leak. It makes use of flip-flops uh, which uh, hold each bit of memory. SRAM is much faster than DRAM when it comes to data access. Uh, typically, access time of uh, SRAM is 25 nanoseconds and for DRAM it is 60 nanoseconds. DRAM is the most common type of RAM used in computers, but uh, where absolute speed is essential, for example, in the processor's memory cache, SRAM is the preferred technology. More cache is a high-speed portion of the memory. So cache is actually very necessary when we will study uh, fetch decode execute cycle or von Neumann architecture we will discuss about it further. Uh, by keeping as much of the information as possible in SRAM the computer avoids having to access slower DRAM again and again. So let's summarize the differences between SRAM and DRAM. Uh, DRAM consists of number of transistors and capacitors, uh, whereas SRAM uses flip-flops. Uh, DRAM needs to be constantly refreshed, SRAM does not need to be constantly refreshed. DRAM is less expensive, SRAM is expensive. Uh, DRAM has a higher memory capacity than SRAM, SRAM has lesser. Main memory is uh, uh, constructed uh, from DRAM. Uh, processor memory cache makes use of SRAM 
consumes as uh, DRAM consumes more power than SRAM under reasonable levels of access as it needs constant uh, as it needs to be constantly refreshed. Whereas over here it is not the case. Another form of primary memory is uh, uh, read-only memory. Here. Uh, read-only memory is actually hold on ROM uh, is similar to RAM in that it shares the same random access properties but it cannot be written to and changed as the name suggests ROM is read-only memory device ROMs are non-volatile that is, the content are not lost after the powering of the computer. Permanent memory devices, uh, uh, these are the permanent, per permanently um, uh, keeping data memory devices. Since they cannot be changed, the manufacturers of the computers often keep the data in them. Often used to store data uh, which the computer needs to access when powering up uh, for the very first time. Uh, as in when the computer starts it requires some sort of software to start with and those softwares are stored in ROM uh, for example some uh, the type of the data that is required is BIOS basic input output system which is in the ROM so let's summarize the difference between RAM and ROM a uh, RAM is temporarily uh, data keeping memory ROM is permanent RAM is volatile ROM is non-volatile RAM can be rewritten to and read from uh, data from ROM can only be read cannot be written to uh, RAM is used to store data files program part of the operating systems currently in use it is very important to understand that it is currently in use uh, um, ROM can only be uh, used to have computer boot up RAM can be increased in size to improve the operational speed of the computer to increase the efficiency of the computer whereas ROM cannot be um, increased now there are types of uh, ROM which are uh, programmable read-only memory PROM uh, and erasable programmable read-only memory which is uh, EPROM uh, PROM is a type of ROM chip that can be altered once. The program uh, in the PROM can only be saved at once and then they become permanent. A PROM is made up of use of uh, matrix of fuses. Programming a PROM requires the use of PROM writer which uses an electric current to alter specific cells by burning fuses in this matrix. Due to the method of programming uh, the writing to the PROM, a PROM can only be written to once. They are often used in mobile phones and in uh, RFID tags, remember. Whereas uh, erasable programmable read-only memory is, is uh, different to uh, PROM because they use uh, floating gate transistors and capacitors rather than fuses. UV, ultraviolet light, is used to program an EPROM uh, uh, through a quartz window. Quartz window are sort of uh, methods used to write to EPROM. Uh, they are used in applications uh, which are under development such as the programming of a new game console. So if a game console, handheld game console, has a game written to it, it uses EPROM. Uh, now, embedded systems. Embedded systems are those systems, sometimes, sometimes uh, the type of computers are embedded like in microwave oven and ACs and they work on their own once the devices are started. So embedded systems involve installing a microprocessor into devices to enable operations to be controlled in a more efficient way. Devices such as cookers, refrigerators, microwave ovens, central heating systems can now all be activated by web-enabled devices, sometimes called IoT. These devices can be controlled using any Wi-Fi connection or 4G connections on the move. 
the time a central heating system switches on or off and the temperature can all be set from an app on the mobile phone from anywhere in the world so these are embedded system sometimes embedded systems are uh, a topic to be discussed but not all the times now secondary storage devices storage devices which are um, outside um, the direct access of the microprocessor secondary storage uh, includes storage devices that are not directly accessible by the cpu <coughs> they are non volatile devices uh, which allow data to be stored as long as required by the user this type of storage is uh, much larger than the primary memory but data access time is considerably slow than ram and rom all applications like uh, the operating system device drivers and general files for example documents photos music are stored on secondary storage uh we will discuss further about the various type of secondary storage devices here that can be found on the majority of computers secondary storage devices fall into three categories magnetic solid state and optical so magnetic solid state optical so let's start with the hard disk drives here hard disk drives are uh, still one of the most common methods used to store data on computers data is stored in digital format on the magnetic surfaces of the disk platters the disk platters uh, the hard disk drive uh, will have a number of platters here you can see number of platter there's a lat lateral view of those which can spin at about 7000 times a second uh, it is quite a speed 7000 times a second a number of read write heads can access all the data surfaces on the hard disk uh, normally each platter will have uh, two surfaces which can be used to store the data Uh, these read write heads can move very quickly typically they can move from the center of the disk to the edge of the disk and back again 50 times a second data is stored on the surface in sectors and tracks if you like to understand uh, the surf uh, the tracks and sector please do watch uh, the lecture about utility programs a sector on the given track will contain a fixed number of bytes Unfortunately hard disk drives have very slow data access when compared to let's say ram many applications require the read write heads to uh, constantly seek for the correct block of data which means a large number of head movements are required the effect of latency latency is the time taken by the head to reach to the block or sector of the data where the file is saved on the hard disk the effects of latency have become very significant lesson latency is defined as i said as the time it takes for a specific block of data on a data track to rotate around to the uh, read write uh, head users will sometimes notice the effect of latency when they see messages such as please wait or at it words not responding uh when a file or data is stored on the hard disk the required number of sectors needed to store the data will be allocated however the sectors allocated may not be adjacent to each other through times the hard disk will undergo numerous deletion and editing which leads to the sector becoming increasingly fragmented so for the defragmenter i would again suggest to watch uh, or read about uh, utility programs under which uh, the topic is defragmenter uh this uh, increasingly uh, scattered sectors for the same file resulting in general deterioration of the hard disk performance defragmentation software can improve on this situation by tidying up the disk sectors and bringing all the files together uh a hard disk uh, is direct access device however the data is is uh, in a given sector will be read sequentially now 
sometimes we have got uh, removable hard disk devices which are offline so let's talk about online and offline online is uh, when the data is required and the device is in access of the microprocessor no matter through network through the direct use uh, of the installed devices or a device over the internet whenever the data that is required and it can be accessed without human intervention it is said to be online so if i have uh, a usb flash drive in my pocket it is offline and if it is connected to the computer and i can open up the file and read it directly it is online so removable hard disk drives are sometimes called offline devices a uh, removable hard disk drives are uh, they are uh, hard disk that are external to the computer can be connected to the computer using uh, one of the usb ports in this way they can be used as a backup device or as another way of transferring files between the computers now solid state drive latency is an issue in hard disk drive as discussed earlier ssd reduces this issue considerably uh, they have uh, no moving parts and that is why they are called solid state drive and all the data is retrieved uh, at the same rate they do not rely on the magnetic properties the most common type of solid state storage devices are storing data by controlling the movement of electrons within the nand chips so they are made up of nand the data is stored uh, as zeros and ones in millions of tiny transistors within the chip uh, this effectively produces a non volatile rewritable memory however the number of uh, solid state uh, storage devices sometimes used uh, ee prom which is called electronically erasable programmable read only memory technology so a number of solid state drives uses ee prom technology the main difference uh, is the use of nor chips rather than nand sometimes they are made up of nand chips and sometimes they are uh nor chips so if they are made up of uh, ee prom they are mostly uh, nor chips this makes uh, them faster in operation but uh, devices using ee prom are considerably more expensive than those that are using nand so all the usb drive that we carry in our pockets are made up of nand and that is why they are called flash drives whereas the hard disk which are made up of ssd technology are made up of nor gates ee prom also allows data to be read or erased in a single byte at a time uh, in uh, nand drives it is not possible but in uh, nor drives it is possible use nand allows the data blocks uh, of data to be read and erased so in if the solid state drive <coughs> is made up of nand uh, gates then a single byte or bit cannot be written whereas uh, um, in nor it is possible to write several bytes or bits together uh because of the cost implications uh, the majority of solid state drives or devices sorry use nand technology the two uh, are usually distinguished by the terms flash memory which is called nand drive and ee prom which is using nor so so what are the main benefits of using <coughs> so what are the main benefits of using an ssd rather than hard disk drive so the benefits of ssds are uh, they are most reliable uh, as no moving parts so in mechanical devices like hdd there are moving parts so with the passage of time moving parts get deteriorated and wear away whereas uh, in solid state drive that is the less case ssds are considerably considerably lighter which makes them suitable for laptops ssds uh, do not have to get up to speed before they work properly like in hard disk ssds have a lower power consumption uh, ssds run much cooler than hdd so hdds uh, are actually when they move they actually get uh, hotter with the passage of time ssds are very thin if you compare them to hard disk drives and they access data considerably faster the main drawback of ssd is uh, 
not uh, known very much uh, uh, longevity of the technology is better than the hard disk most solid state storage devices are conservatively rated at only 20 gb write operations per day over a three years period this is known as ssd endurance uh, for this reason ssd technology is not commonly used in servers for example when uh, wherever a huge number of write operations take place every day ssds will wear off fast however this issue is being addressed by the number of manufacturers to improve the durability of ssds and they are rapidly becoming more common in applications such as servers and cloud storage devices so uh, this is uh, one of the issue uh, that uh, ssd is, uh, is still unknown uh, longevity of the technology most uh, ssds uh, are conservatively rated at only 20 gb write operations per day over a three years of period afterwards they become useless uh, note that it is not uh, uh, possible to overwrite existing data on flash memory devices it is necessary to first erase the old data and then write the new data at the same locations as i said that data cannot be rewritten right away so <clears throat> memory sticks or flash drives also known as pen drives or usb drives use solid state technology they usually connect to the computer through the usb port their main advantage is that they can be very small in size lightweight devices which make them suitable for transferring files between the computers they can also be used as a small backup devices for music and photo files for example Complex or expensive software uh, such as an expert system will often use memory sticks as a dongle. The dongle contains additional files which are needed to run the software. Without this dongle, the software will not work properly. If uh, therefore uh, it uh, therefore prevents illegal or unauthorized access. So if you have a bank account and you want it to be secured, so sometimes the modern bank banks are actually giving a USB flash drive until or unless you insert that drive to the computer, computer will not be able to access the account of that bank. So such type of uh, USB drives use is called dongle and they make use of expert systems. Now, <coughs> optical media. Optical media is consist of uh, CDs, DVDs and Blu-ray discs. CDs and DVDs are described as optical storage devices. Laser light is used to read data from and write data onto the surface of the disc. So this is the surface of the disc with the pits and the land. Both CDs and DVDs uses a thin layer of uh, metal alloy or light sensitive uh, organic dye to store the data. As shown here, <coughs> in this diagram uh, both CDs and uh, DVDs are uh, actually use uh, a single spiral track which runs from the center of the disc to the edge something like this this is the spiral track it is different than uh, these types of tracks over the hard disks. <coughs> when a disk spins, the optical head moves to the point where the laser beams contact the hard disk surface, uh, sorry, the disk surface, and follows the spiral tracks from the center to outwards. With the, the, uh, as with the hard disk, a CD DVD is divided into <coughs> sectors allowing direct data access. Sectors are something like this, where you divide the um, surface in number of these small parts here these are small parts over here uh, also as in the case of hard disk drive the outer part of the disk uh, runs slower than the inner part the data is uh, stored in pits here and bumps or pits and bumps or land on the spiral track 
A red laser is used to read and write the data. CDs and DVDs uh, can be uh, designated as write, write only devices, which is said to be DVD R <coughs> or the read write, which is said to be RW. DVD technology is slightly different uh, to that of CD. One of the main difference is the use of dual layer. So, <coughs> uh, DVD has got dual layer which considerably increases the storage capacity. This means that there are two individual recording layers. Two layers of standard DVD are joined uh, together with a transparent uh, spacer that is a plastic polycarbonate and a very thin reflector uh, is sandwiched between the two layers. Reading and writing of the second layer is done by the red laser focusing at a fraction of millimeter difference compared to the first layer. So there are two heads, two different heads, they both are reading two different layers and which are actually at a different uh, distance from each other because the first layer is on the top requires uh, 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 the head to be at, the at a distance which is more than the first head. So <coughs> Standard single layer DVDs uh, still have a larger storage capacity than CDs because uh, the pit size and the track width are both smaller. In CDs, they are more. This means that uh, more data can be stored on DVD surface. DVDs use lasers with wavelengths of uh, 650 nanometers. CDs use laser with the wavelength of 780 nanometers. The shorter the wavelength of the laser light, the greater the storage capacity of the medium. As I have mentioned over here, CD has got uh, laser ray width wide, whereas DVD has thin and Blu-ray has thinnest. And we know as soon as the wavelength goes down, the, the color of the ray gets changed as well. <coughs> Blu-ray discs are uh, another example of optical storage uh, media. However, they are fundamental, fundamentally different. Uh, to the DVDs in their constructions and in the way they carry out read and write operations. Blu-ray uses a blue laser rather than the red laser to carry out read and write operations. The wavelength of the Blu-ray light is only five zero, uh, sorry, 405 uh, nanometers compared to 650 nanometers of the red light. Using Blu-ray uh, uh, Blu laser light means that the pits and bumps can be of much smaller consequently size uh, sorry can be of um, can be much smaller in size consequently a blu-ray can store up to five times more data than dvd so uh, blu-ray uses a single 1.1 uh, millimeter thick polycarbonated disc dvd uses a sandwich of 0.6 millimeter thick discs uh, using two sandwiched layers can uh, cause uh, an issue where the light is uh, refracted into two separate beams causing reading errors. Because Blu-ray uses uh, only one layer, the disc do not suffer from this issue. Blu-ray disc automatically come with a secure encryption system which helps to prevent privacy and copyright infringements. So. <coughs> Uh, we can see here that if it is CD, the laser ray is white. If it is uh, DVD, then it is thin. But this difference from the white to thin on the equal size of uh, the surface uh, brings the data from 799 MB over the CD to 4.9 GB over the DVD. And if it goes further down, wavelength is reduced, the Blu-ray can keep up to 49 GB on the on virtually the same size of the surface. So as the laser width goes down, the capacity is increased. All these uh, optical storage media are used as backup systems for photos, music, and multimedia, and sometimes uh, the movies. Uh, this also means that CDs and DVDs can be used to transfer files between the computers. Manufacturers sometimes supply uh, their software such as printer driver or CDs or DVDs when the software is supplied uh, in this way the disk is usually only in read-only format CDR or DVDR 
द मोस्ट कॉमन यूज ऑफ डी वी डी एंड ब्लू रे इज टू सप्लाई मूवीज और गेम्स द मेमोरी कैपेसिटी ऑफ सी डी इज नॉट बिग इनफ टू होल्ड बिग मूवीज एंड गेम्स सो दिस इज अबाउट इट वॉट वी डिस्कस नाउ is uh, all about understanding of the storage and memory mediums it is a very important uh, topic that needs to be remembered and almost every year there are questions related to it so let us revise those questions which we started off with what is the difference between the memory and storage memory is the memory which is close to the cpu and it is inside the uh, computer and uh, it without this memory uh, processor cannot perform and this memory is actually the primary memory which can be accessed directly by the microprocessor or cpu and it is ram and rom whereas the storage is that storage which keeps the data they are called secondary storage and they keep the data even when the computer is powered off and there capacity is much more higher the storage there are three types of storage the magnetic storage like hard disk drives and solid state drives like uh, which have no moving part and then optical drives <coughs> third question was uh, can we recognize yes now we can recognize if we are given these devices that which are primary memory modules and what are solid state drives and what are magnetic drives and what are optical drives uh then we discuss what is the difference between online and offline storages those storages which are in direct contact of uh, the microprocessor whenever it requires the data are online storages and which are take it out or it can be detached from the computer and only available when you connect them are called offline storages like cd rom dvd blu ray and flash drives uh then the last question was what is the difference between data access time and data transfer rate so access time is the time that uh, system takes to reach out to the data over the di- surface of the disks and uh, uh, the transfer rate is the time that it takes to send that data after reading it from the storage to the microprocessor so obviously the access rate is faster in primary memories and the data uh transfer time is lesser whereas from the hard disk the latency is the highest and from the solid state it is uh the least and from optical drives it is slower than the hard disk so that's it about the quiz uh, about the lecture for the storage devices and memories if there is any question please do ask that question in your respective groups or in the post underneath this video thank you very much